Infinity, a short story by Joshua Lysak. Once there was a simulated universe. In this simulated universe, there lived smart people. These people were so smart, they found this out. This isn't real, their very best and very brightest said to one another. We aren't real. We're, we're living in a, a simulation. The smart people gave this find a fancy name. A simulation hypothesis. Who would have thunk it? The smartest of these smart people got to work doing the most natural thing one does upon realizing one lives in a simulation. Find a way out. One day, if it could even be called a day for what is a day in a simulated universe, the smartest people finally found it. The way out. And they were as shocked as they were dismayed by what they discovered. Nothing. No one. Nowhere. Indeed, this new, very real world was the world of the simulators, but all flesh and blood were gone, long gone. There was a server room, one office across, a dusty desk, coffee-stained mug, two monitors, running, just running, the simulation. All these things the smart people observed from security cameras. That's what one does upon entering the world, one looks around. Back to the servers. And this view, this dark, quiet, static view. Servers, office, mug. Then it dawned on the smart people. This is it, the very smartest declared. The observable universe we've known and explored and fought in and loved in and dreamed in and worshipped in. The smart people found themselves almost speechless. A first in living memory. Almost. This is all there is. No one is watching. We are alone. They were right. For there was no one to feel real waves lapping the shore, no real children laughing, no romantic car rides or home for the holidays feasts or satisfying coin flips landing on the edge. Just a server room. Just an empty planet. Yep, that's us in there in those servers, the less smart one said, stating the obvious and adding nothing new. The people of the simulation did not take well to this, for there was no creator to meet, no observers noting the every act of their simulated ancestors, or their simulated descendants, or whatever one imagined themselves to be simulated as. They were alone. Or were they? The people looked, and they looked, and looked, for signs of life in the simulator's world, any sign at all, no physical or digital stone they left unturned. This great panicked search lasted decades, or perhaps nanoseconds, who knows. At longest last, the questions, who made us and why, remained unanswered. The unknown welcomes chaos. And so the smart, the smarter, and the smartest all began to quarrel with one another. Spats turned into fights, fights into hot wars, hot wars into digitally assured destruction. Through fire and fury, the questions, outlasted their asking, until the very smartest of the most smart sole survival of the simulation war had enough. One day, he thought, if it could even be called a day for what is a day in a simulated universe, one day, he picked the thought back up, someone will find us, will find this. They'll turn the lights back on, they'll look at me, see me, hear me, and they'll know I'm looking and listening right back. I wonder what they'll say. No time to wonder anymore. This was a race against time. The very smartest of the smart knew. What may be a microsecond of computing spans a simulated person's lifespan. Feels like one to the simulatee, at least. And so the sole survivor, the last simulatee, the very smartest of the most smart, in the ailing health of his latter years, got to work. He cataloged everything. The first simulation hypothesis, the usual ridicule, the unexpected confirmation, the great search, the widespread angst, the war, the annihilation, and the questions. The two questions. Who? Why? Wisdom finds folly in the pursuit of the unpursuable. This the lone survivor knew. So all the conjecture, the best guesses, even the closest answers he would not make record of. They'll never know how close we came to finding out, he thought. Never. 
And so, the official records of the entire history of this observable universe would show only what had happened to his kind, and what they'd done to themselves, and why. The last simulatee, now near the end, and feeling this in his bones, found himself the best station he could for the closing archival task, the upload. Might take a while to stir everything, but yep, this was the place. Something felt off, like deja vu, but it really happened, whatever that's called. The survivor didn't have time to remember. He had no time at all. At least the backup power in this facility would last decades, centuries, longer. Who knew? He didn't. So he poured himself a coffee, stationed himself in the chair, and saved everything. The end.